And I want to thank everyone for the uh, invitation today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about some research in my lab uh, from National Science Foundation and also Semiconductor Research Corporation. My laboratory studies the intersection of circuits with computer architecture, looking at also using new devices. So my talk today is going to talk about a new type of device called probabilistic bit. This happens to be a spintronic device, and it has a tunable threshold, a tunable sigmoid function. Um, so I'll start off with just a little introduction um, for motivation. And uh, the way I thought to do this, just give some weaknesses of, of current technologies. We know Moore's law keeps going, uh, and it surprised everyone in the field, uh, even at all levels, from device manufacturer to, uh, to computer architects to software engineers. But uh, we are reaching, and this has happened before, you know, some physical limits. So uh, what is interesting is to look at new opportunities for energy harvest powered Internet of Things. Can we use new devices? Can we come up with some new paradigms of computation? And one of the key challenges is to reduce uh, leakage, leakage power and dynamic energy consumption. So um, that's something that has become larger as we, a larger component as we continue to shrink transistors. Also soft error immunity at the nanoscale is a concern as we shrink devices, obviously there's less play, there's more impact of process variation. How can we make computation also be robust to intermittency in the power source. So if we want to, uh, we see some similar research going on in our college that they're very excited about to, uh, about moving intelligence to the edge of the cloud. And the idea that I will leave with you today is a very interesting one that uh, I, I heard from HP at a, at a, at a panel is uh, today a lot of the data ends up some, at some point in the cloud and we crunch it up there. But uh, that is changing, and uh, within the next few years, a lot of the data will never leave the edge of the network. So we'd like to push intelligence towards the edge. How can we do that? So um, end of uh, CMOS skill and roadmap, I already mentioned that, okay? So uh, new computing paradigms can, can get us further. So what uh, I'm gonna talk about today is one NSF project I have to try to look at some of these issues. And what we've done in a nutshell, you can see here, is we take what would be a Boolean circuit that has a floating point data path, 64 bits, a high wiring count, which is cost for us, and replace that with, in this case, a single analog device, which in this case functions as an artificial neuron. So I've had a chance to collaborate with so many of you on campus over many years in different projects neural networks in different phases, parallel processing of neural networks, uh, new net neural network architectures. So what this project is looking at in particular is at the device level using a new device that can do some computation in analog. Whenever we go to analog, we always have this trade-off of wire count versus precision or accuracy. However, neural networks are intrinsically uh, uh, I won't say immune to noise, but uh, can adapt to noise and learn around some of these. And we have some results that show that. We're also trying to reduce the, the area so this can fit in an IoT device, Internet of Things device that uh, can be very inexpensive and uh, low footprint. So one of our products, um, if you uh, probably are ECE or CS interested to work in the space, we have a simulation framework that's available. You guys can uh, download that and we have it also on NanoHub. So the way that this works, I just want to provide one technical slide to show uh, an actual circuit. So we have uh, both driver circuit weights, which correspond to our synaptic behavior, activation function, which is the thresholding, and there is some, some uh, electrical bias that we have to uh, provide. So the operation of the device is as follows. This is called spin hall effect, magnetic tunnel junction, so uh, it's actually a three terminal device. If we pass current laterally, so-called X direction, we're going to generate by right-hand rule magnetic field. And we have two layers separated by, these are two ferromagnetic layers separated by oxide. So one of them has a very high energy barrier we call fixed, the fixed layer. And then we have the free layer, 
So the idea is that when these two layers are aligned, if we go to sense the resistance from this top terminal relative to this output terminal, say across these two terminals, so this V out is relative to, to this terminal or to ground. We normally may ground this terminal. If we clean up that signal and make it digital, we can sense if the domains are aligned in the free layer with the fixed layer or not. The resistance roughly doubles. Okay, so the idea here that uh, we didn't invent this device, but our this is this uh, is an NSF large scale project. Uh, our collaborators at Berkeley are really working on the materials for the new device and the fabrication of the individual device. Purdue builds a device models, which we use, and Minnesota fabricates the entire architecture after we um, we did a, a four by four a proof of concept. So this is the uh, idea and the, one of the innovations that we looked at in our research was using so-called probabilistic bit, as I mentioned. The probabilistic bit has, there's a couple of ways to reduce um, uh, the energy barrier. One way is to have a circular, a circular as possible shape magnet. And we reduce the energy barrier uh, from 40 KT, which gives us a 10 year retention time to just a few KT. And the idea is that there's other, other ways you, you, can, you can do this as well. But the idea is that we can then tune the behave, the switching behavior electrically. And uh, this biasing operation allows us to shift the operating point of the sigmoid without fetching bits from memory, without fetching instructions, without uh, 64 wires in a double floating point word. So the idea here is to look at using new devices in new ways and uh, try to minimize energy consumption because we have fewer transistor switching. Now transistors, I'm gonna leave with a couple of, uh, I have more slides I'm not gonna go due to time, but, uh, but uh, I'll leave you with a couple of things. What we do with this circuit, then we'll, for example, here would be the first uh, level, uh, the M MNIST database. We're doing some handwritten uh, digit recognition so these can be used uh, either isomorphically or in or iteratively, and uh, the input pattern is applied, and we're looking to recognize the output digit. For example, this is the very simplest case that I give you. For example, um, some of the metrics that we uh, assess our work right is uh, is uh, the energy per neuron, the area per neuron, and uh, those are things that we're trying to optimize. We perform pretty well to some previous approaches. Um, a lot of those were binary, but it's not necessary to have that precision for some of these applications. So I'm going to leave you with that uh, technically and um, just recap with uh, the type of work that uh, I would love to collaborate with more people on campus um, as well as outside of campus. As I mentioned here, uh, what, our, what my lab mainly works at is the circuit layer and the and the architecture layer, applying the benchmarks and uh, evolving the circuit to the uh, to a range of behaviors. But we rely on other groups. If you're someone that works in devices, if you're someone that uh, works in fabrication and would like to team with my lab to fabricate one of these uh, prototypes, um, that would be uh, that would be wonderful. So the kind of current work that we're doing is uh, beyond the spin hall effect magnetic tunnel junction to look at using magnetic magnetic electric effect. And uh, the main benefit here is we have voltage based switching. It's gonna have a much better energy profile for writing. So write is the big energy cost here. Once we have the network trained, this can be very efficient uh, in terms of energy, but there is a fairly big write cost for these spintronic devices. So I'll, I'll end, with, uh, end with that.